Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I am about to read Psalms 21. This is Saturday service. You're meeting with God's remnant at God's Church of Love online. God bless you. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire and has not withholden the request of his lips. Wow. Now I can say right now that both Andrea and I have had some serious prayers answered in this week. Just immediate provision. Okay, back to God's word. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest the crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding glad with thy countenance. For the king trusteth in the Lord, and through the mercy of the Most High he shall not be moved. Thine hand shall find out all thine enemies. Thy right hand shall find out those that hate thee. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in the time of thine anger. The Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath, and the fire shall devour them. Their fruit shall thou destroy from the earth and their seed from among the children of men. For they intended evil against thee. They imagined a mischievous device which they are not able to perform. Therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrows upon thy strings against the face of them. Be thou exalted, O Lord, in thine own strength, so will we sing and praise thy power. You know, no matter what comes against us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I look at all the enemies as the enemies of the workers of darkness, principalities, and they will move through people to work against us or to sabotage our whatever, whatever pertains to us, they try to sabotage. Well, that's the enemy working against you. And God will handle Satan and his little demons and his imps. He'll handle them. But I want to tell you, you have an advocate with God. God is on your side. You do not have to pull your hair out at the root trying to figure things out. God's already got the solution before the problem even reared his ugly head. God has the solution. And, you know, like Andre and I were talking earlier, you can express yourself, you can talk, you can get things off your chest. But whatever you do, take Galatians' advice, <laughs> the book of Galatians, the works of the flesh. Don't use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Don't use your liberty as an occasion to sin. You can be angry, but sin not. You can tell the truth and tell it like it is, but you don't have to sin while you're doing it. So what I want to share with you is there's no need for cussing people out. There's no need for strife, for antagonism. There's no need for spite, for putting folks down and putting them in their place, and mm, 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 mm. you don't have to do all that. You've got an advocate. And when he handles something, it's done in peace. It's a clean job, no mess left behind, like it is when we use our flesh. No regrets. Hmm. Ha! I'm telling you. And the blessing is, you win. 
I win. God wins the victory for us. And we don't have to put our hand in the till messing things up. So what ends up happening is you get solutions more quickly, more speedily. Things happen for you. You get that job that you wanted. You get the answer to your problem that you wanted. See, the thing that I love about God is he will, he will iron out wrinkles you don't even know are coming your way. He's already got the iron on the ironing board. He's plugged it in, flipped the switch. It's getting all good and hot, hot and steamy. Waiting to attack those wrinkles that are attacking you. Now, where we fall short, go to Galatians 5. Help me, Father. Where we fall short is, this is what we go by. Starting at verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Now, here we go. We go all the way down to verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. That's freedom. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another, or if present day English would be consumed one by another. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, listen, before we go any further, Pat's two cents. What happens is when we call on God to come rescue us, we call on God to come and help us and bless us and keep us and protect us and defend us and vindicate us and all of that. If we do it with the right spirit, the solution comes much quicker. But if while we're calling on God, we're calling on God on one phone, and with the other phone, we're cussing folks out. With the other phone, we're telling them to go to hell. With the other phone, we're doing things for spite. You did this to me, I'm going to get you back. Don't think God is going to co-mingle with your flesh to solve the problem. He will step back, fold his arms, and watch you make a mess of things. And when you realize the mess you're making, and you get tired of you, and you turn around and turn to God for real, then he'll roll up his sleeves and say, now will you get out the way and stay out the way. But see, many times we get in the way. So always be careful about that. This is what happens when we get into the flesh. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, Hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, but the fruit of the Spirit is love joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, 
meekness, temperance, against such, there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. And see this pack. Now, sometimes your affections tell you to go to that person's door and ream them out. Ream them up one end, ream them down the other. That's where you have to be careful. Now, there are times like, like uh, my friend and I were talking earlier, sometimes you need to say some things. You just have to say the truth. You're not saying it in strife. You're not saying it in, uh, in um, how can I say? It? You're not saying it to slice them up and you know chew them up and spit them out. You're saying it because some things, it's just time. It needs to be said. You know, like, for example, one time I had to tell my boss, and I prayed before I talked to her. I said, I don't know if you realize it, but what you are doing speaks to me as disrespect. And I doubt seriously if you would treat so-and-so that way because of all the money they donate to your company. But because we are mere employees of yours, you feel like you can treat us any way. Now, whether you realize it or not, that's what you communicate to me by the things you do and the things you say and the way you do them. I was hot. And when I get hot, I can't, I, mean, I can't even imitate it unless I'm really angry. But when I get hot, I talk at 100 miles an hour. I was hot. But I was, it was a holy truth. It wasn't anything that I had to go back and apologize to God for. So yes, you can speak your mind. You can speak your heart. But always pray first before you open that flap. Make sure that the words are tainted with, I mean, not tainted. Make sure they are soaked in God's love and his truth that they're soaked in holiness so that you always represent God in a way. See, life is going to happen. People are going to come against you. Just like the woman, she came to my house three days this week, three different days. Knock, knock, knock. Ding, 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 ding. With another little, you have to do this. You have to do that. You can't park your car over here. I said, well, I'm, I'm staying calm. I'm like, help me, Lord. Well, you did tell me to park over there. But you got to move your car every day. I said, but there's no written law that says that. Well, we need you to move your car every day. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I said, now, does that go for people who are crippled? People who are half paralyzed? You already got them going a mile away to get to the car. Now, these are handicapped folks now. We ain't talking about everyday Joes. These are people with handicap stickers on their car. You really think that's fair, but okay, I'll move it. And then the next thing I park over in another area, bam, knock, 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 ding a ling a ling a ling. Ah, you can't park there and you're backed in the wrong way. You have to pull in forward. I mean, just picking at straws. Do you know the whole time God kept me in perfect peace? Because I know me and my temper. I would have got so tired of that mess. I didn't even get upset. I was like, wow, girl, the word is true. If you keep your mind stayed on him, he does keep you in perfect peace. And then the next thing, ding-a-ling-a-ling-a-ling. Ding, 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 ding. You got to get that car in your garage. We can't have it all over the place. I just took my car and parked it three blocks away at the 24-hour fitness because I figured nobody, I asked their permission. The guy said, nobody's paying attention because, you know, we're open 24 hours, so it's fine. And I was able to stay there for a day. And then this couple comes. God sent couple. And they helped me clean out my garage so I can park my car there that very night. I am telling you, God will, 
If you keep your attitude right and you focus on him, he will grant you solutions that you never saw coming. You don't have the money for it. You don't have the wherewithal. You don't have the connections. Bam. I didn't have the connections to tell me this house had dropped by $10,000. God himself told me. I mean, when God has a solution for you, as long as you keep your flesh out of it, the solutions will happen way quicker. Way quicker. So that's why the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding. Now, in my mind, yes, because I am of the black race and we as black people do have issues with always being singled out. If anybody's going to be singled out, it's usually us. Latinos would be the second group and then whatever other race. But let me tell you, Knowing how that feels, knowing that we tend to be the object of the subject or the object of, of uh, oppression, what ends up happening is when something happens, our mind, even though we don't want to dwell on it, plays the color card. And the first thing we think of, are we the only ones being harassed about that? Hmm. So. I had to get that out of me too. I had to ignore everything that could get me riled up. And I'm telling you, God help me. And when you keep your keep guile, God says, whatever you do, don't let guile get in there. Leave your heart free of guile. You keep guile out and God stays. I'm telling you, God will work out whatever you're fighting, Whoever you're fighting against, whatever's going on in your life, whatever seems to be oppressing at the moment, whatever seems to be coming against you at the moment, whatever you're struggling with, whoever you're struggling with, trust me when I say, you keep your mind stayed on God. He will keep you in perfect peace. The scripture goes like this. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on God. He will not only keep you in perfect peace, he will go ahead of you and make the crooked places straight and the rough places plain. That means smooth. He will smooth out the rough edges. He will handle your dilemma for you. But you have got to stop leaning to your own understanding, stop trying to be in control, stop manipulating, stop mouthing off, get your hands off the problem and hand the problem over to God. That's what I did the night before. I said, Lord, here is the HOA, here are the harassments, here is my car, here's the garage, here's the whole problem, it's yours. I'm just going to do my little YouTube video and go to bed. Hmm. Had no idea the solution would be there the very next morning. Just like that. Hmm. Problem solved by mid-afternoon. My car was in the garage. I'm telling you, you guys, it pays to trust. There's a, a song that says, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Oh. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know, thus saith the Lord. Okay, I got to stop. Because even though my voice isn't there and I'm hoarse and I'm just trying to get the point across, I'm getting emotional. 
And I don't want to start doing the boo-hoos while I'm trying to do the word. Oh, boy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. Trust in God. Trust his heart. Even when the answer's not there, trust his heart. Please do that because it's that trust and that faith and calling on God that moves him. He says, when I hear the cry of the needy and the poor, I will arise. That's what God does. He jumps up and comes to our rescue. Know that you have an advocate with the Father. You're not in your situation alone. You're not in your dilemma alone. Mm. Okay. Anyway, I'm getting emotional. I don't want to stop. Um, I just want to say no matter what Satan has planned against you, no matter, you know how uh, Psalms 21 said he had, a mis he had a mischievous device set for you that he was not able to perform. The reason he wasn't able to perform was because you kept your flesh out of it. You kept your mess out of it. You kept your mouth out of it. But, and God was free to come in and handle it for you. It doesn't take money to handle your problem. It doesn't take connections to handle your problem. It takes God. Just God alone. And the reason I say that is because God can supply the money. God can supply the connections. God can hook you up. He can be your connection. God will send the people to come and help you. God will bring an answer. God will silence your enemy. God will move your enemy completely out of your way where they can't help but get out your way because God will raise a situation in their life that they have to finally mind their own business. Now they're out of your way. You're free to go. You're free to do. You're free to be. You're free to come. You're free to whatever, but you're free. God knows how to remove the obstacles. You don't have to hire a bulldozer. Let God handle it. Nine times out of ten, it'll be a lot less expensive on your part. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave it alone. Just three ways you, you lean on God. You pray, you read his word, and you wait on the Lord. And you want to add a cherry on top of that with some whipped cream? Praise him while stuff is coming against you. You may be bawling your eyes out. But you say, Lord, I know you're for me. And if you're for me, who can be against me? I got the best. Lord, I bless and praise your holy name. I know you love me. I know you're pulling for me. Help me not be angry, Lord. Do whatever you got to do. But give all your attention to him. All your attention to him. Not the problem. And as long as your eyes are on God, you, like Peter, will be able to walk on water. Mm. Okay, God bless you. I hope that's encouraging to you. I hope that lifts your spirits. Just know, stay out of the flesh and you'll stay out of mess. Stay in God. Hey, and it's a done deal. God bless you. Amen.